Hey hey, what's up everybody? Cryos has been recently released for EVE Online with a huge update for the industry. Within many changes, one of the most obvious and rather interesting one is the complete overhaul of the science and industry window. The manufacturing process has become more streamlined with all the necessary information being readily available to you. As you may or may not be aware, there is no more cap with regards to slots available for manufacturing within each station. Instead, the system has been replaced with the rising cost for each job within the very popular systems. That information is readily found in the Facilities tab of the new Science and Industry interface. Here you can arrange the station by the manufacturing cost or any other information that is suitable to you. The Jobs tab is self-explanatory, but the Teams tab is the new addition to the Cryos update. Special teams can now be bid on for any particular system through team chartering. The winning bid gets the team in the system of their choice for 4 weeks. And then anybody within that system will be able to take advantage of the bonuses that that team offers. So let's take a look at some hands-on manufacturing examples for the new Cryos system and compare the numbers. I have a blueprint available at GTA 4.4 for manufacturing. Before the station will be impossible to manufacture at. But now it's no problem as long as I'm willing to pay the manufacturing costs associated with it. You can see that the system cost index is as high as it can go. The current manufacturing job at GITO will cost me about 9000 ISK. Now I have the exact same blueprint located in a different system with a much lower cost index. The same job in Santolo will cost me slightly over 2000 ISK. Santala's cost index at the time of the making of the video was 0.02 .02 compared to Jito's 0.09. So the cost of manufacturing was 4 times as high in Jito. Depending on the particular item and the market conditions, it still may be profitable to manufacture in Jito. Speaking of profitability, now it's very easy to see in the new interface just how much ISK the job will take and the estimated return of your product. From that, you can do a quick calculation to find out your profit margins. So now let's take a look at what exactly do teams bring to the table. To easily select a suitable team, first highlight the blueprint that you want to manufacture from. Then, switching to the Teams tab, you automatically only see the teams for your particular product that you're trying to manufacture. In my case, I'm producing ammo, and I knew that ahead of time the system had a suitable team operating in it. The bonus that this particular team has is a 2% reduction in the material requirements for the manufacturing job. Increasing the number of runs of the blueprint also increases the bonus efficiency in a way, simply because 2% reduction of a very low number of materials sometimes has virtually no effect. So when using teams, it's best to use blueprints that require either a lot of materials or that have a lot of runs in them. That way you'll be able to maximize the bonus of the material use efficiency of the team. Now the team has to be paid, so the manufacturing costs will increase if you do use the team. So let's compare the numbers for the materials used and the manufacturing job costs with and without the team. And from these numbers we can see that the increase in the job cost to pay the salary for the team is nowhere close to the potential benefits of using the team when it comes to material efficiency. In this particular case, the cost of the materials is decreased by about 4000 ISK. And this number will scale up once we start producing more runs for this blueprint. When picking the teams with time efficiency bonus, it's your call whether you want to pay more for the manufacturing costs to get your item quicker. But definitely if a team has material efficiency bonus, it's a very good idea to hire the team. And going to the blueprint similar to the one that I used in the beginning, you can see that it requires very low number of materials. This is one of these times when using a team will yield virtually no benefits whatsoever. The required quantity of each material is so low that the material efficiency bonus of the team will not reduce it even by one unit. This is one thing to watch out for to avoid needlessly losing your ISK. So this is the new manufacturing process in a nutshell. The map was also changed to show the cost indices for the scientific and industrial processes. This way you can actually see the exact cost number for each system. All this information is dynamic and will be changing over time to reflect the industrial trends. All in all, the Cryos update brings a much needed breath of fresh air to EVE Online industry. It will be very interesting to see how it all evolves from here. Time will tell whether we'll see the shifting of manufacturing hotspots. Or if everybody will just start manufacturing everything at the trade hubs like Jira despite the manufacturing cost. Let me know what you think of this new update. And if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask. I will answer them to the best of my ability or point you in the right direction. 
Thank you very much for watching. And please do not forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one. Say so fly out there and happy manufacturing.